Okay, now let me let me just review a little bit what is the the Stokes theorem. So the beginning we have the curl, right? We have the curl and diverges. Uh, curl F, dive F, and then we have also the Green theorem. The Green theorem, we exchange the line integral, becomes a double integral, and then we can use the uh, definition from 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 the curl actually, and from the uh, perspective of the Stokes theorem, actually Stokes theorem is we can get in more in general. For the green theorem, so it's actually the same as green theorem. We can say it's the same as green theorem, but it's more in general. It, it it's cover a lot of uh, a lot of condition. Okay. So uh, at the end, our line integral, the close we have closed curve line integral. We can make this line integral f dot dr become surface integral. Um, uh, double integral with uh, with the uh, region S, and then we have the curl F, and then dot N, and then dS. Okay, and N is the unit normal to the surface S, and the unit normal we can find through the the del the del of the functions that we define. Okay, so basically, what we have here is we define the curl okay, as usual the curl we have the curl and we define the g okay. so, so this is uh, i think one of the important aspects so we need to define g first okay. and we define usually using the function of two variables for z so, so z minus f of x y is equal to zero so let's let this becomes our function okay and then we evaluate the unit normal. So this is unit normal. So it's actually um, like a unit vector. So you, you are having a vector and defined by the magnitude of the vector. So it's, it's a unit vector. So the del of the, our g and then divide by the magnitude of it. And then, uh, what is happening now is we are multiply with the dot product. We dot product this n with the curl. So we see that this is the results from the from the n. This is from the n. And then uh, we could also look into uh, parameterizations that this will actually. What we what we have here is practically we see that this is actually the green theorem, right? The green theorem, but in more in more uh, general aspect in the three dimension because green theorem before in the previous previous class the green theorem is only for uh, two dimensions, right? So now Stokes theorem we can say Stokes theorem is a green theorem in three dimensions. Right? I think that's also okay to say that. And then we see that it 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 becomes our uh, our formulation okay. the same same formulation from the previous one. So this is just a proving proving the Stokes theorem. Okay. And the last thing here is the example. We have some conditions. We have S. Okay. We have the closed curve line integral, and then we want to evaluate that. And then we are going to use the Stoke theorem. We we find the curl, we find the n, okay. And then we multiply all together and take the double integral. And using the uh, x y as mentioned in the region, okay. <clears throat> and we actually this is the, the final result, the negative two. But if we want to calculate through line integral only. If we can we can do that as well, and we can make this line that go becomes four curve. It depends. It depends on how many curve we might have from the uh, from the from the graph. Okay. 
we have now is just, just only four to make it back to the original position, right? We can have the closed curve here. So we identify each curve, C1, C2, C3, and C4. And you might see that from here, because C1 and C3 is just a straight line and it's a constant. So when we integrate, uh, integrate um, from the vector field, we end up with zero for C1 and C3. But for C2 and C4, we end up with some numbers. And when we calculate the numbers, we compute the numbers, it's become the same result with what we have in with the Stoke theorem. Okay. So this is just to prove that when you calculate the line integral, you can just do it by line integral only, or you can make it into Green theorem or Stoke theorem if it is three dimensions. Okay. So that, that's how you do it. Okay, now next, let me continue and adding another example that we might have. Okay, this is for next example. So what we need to find is integral, line integral, z dx plus x dy plus y dz and c is trace of cylinder x squared plus y squared equal 1 if you see from here that is your um, c in the plane uh, y plus z equal to so this this uh this plane here okay that's the plane okay so you need to have uh, i think better to have a good visual which means that if you can draw the graph through the from the questions, I think that's that will be better okay, if you draw the graph and you can imagine. Oh, this is what we are looking for, and this is the line integral. This is the region R. Okay, so I think that's that's uh, is better. And the C is counterclockwise. It's already been drawn in the picture. Okay. So this is our question here, right? This is our question. We want to find this uh, the closed curve line integral. And remember, what we did before is we are evaluating the line integral of f dr, right? Line integral of f dr, f dot dr. So we need to define the vector field, our vector field. And since we already given this as a as an question that we need to evaluate, then then we might take this as I'll just take it as our vector field. And let's take let f and then we can let f the vector field okay becomes z i plus x J plus Y. Okay, now let 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 make this our vector field, and then we can take this into our curl. So this is the first step. Okay, first step. Define the F and or maybe this will be going there. And the second step, let's define F, compute curl. So curl F, I, J, K. 
So this will be the del. The del is And then each of this we can evaluate. So it's one and zero, so um, I, right? And for J, um, it's minus minus C, so it's plus C. Uh, Z is becoming one, so it's plus J, right? And then for K, is or if you want to write completely we can write total y y minus total z x total x y minus total z And plus total x x minus total y z. Okay, so it's it's k. So it's plus k. Okay. So we have i plus j plus k. That is our curl. Okay. Next is We know, we know that the, the trace is given by x squared plus y squared equal one the cylinder. Uh, and then uh, the plane so we have the cylinder and then we cut the cylinder uh, diagonally like in this picture here with the plane of y plus c equal 2 and basically what we have here is the surface is is going to have this the the upward upward orientation right we have the upward orientation so we have we have this as our end okay <clears throat> and since we have the plane is y plus z equal to so let me write here so since the plane is y plus c equal to. We can make it and manipulate this as our g okay, to calculate the normal. Okay, to calculate the normal, so we can make y plus c minus two equal to zero. Okay. So let this becomes our g. So next thing is compute or not compute. Maybe define g. But Define G uh, I will write here and usually observe or maybe not but usually observe the plane on surface. Okay. That's our G. Then the N is del G and then divide by its magnitude. Okay. Okay, now we take the del. We take the dodo x, it's 0 because there's no x there. So dodo y is become 1, the other will be 0, so 1, right? And then this is 1j plus for z is 1 becomes 1, so it's plus 1k. And the magnitude is one one plus the two squared of two, right? Squared of two. Or we can write 
separately. It's also okay. And then the evaluations that if we want to make this as our FDR, okay, we can write, we could, we could actually write as FDR is the curl F, the curl F, and we'll write the double integral, the curl F is which one here. So we put the curl F, or let me, let me write, is the curl F, and then dot N, and then the S. So curl F is 1 I or I plus J plus K. Okay. And then dot with the N. N is here. Okay. So 1 over square of 2. Okay. And the S. So we take dot product first. This to this, right? So it's just one multiply with one square root of two, one square root of two, right? So we will have two square root of two, right? We will have two square root of two from the dot product. Or we could say this is the same just as the square root of two. Then we could write down. This becomes square root of 2. We could factor out this constant. And then we could just write this ds like that. Okay, and then what happens now is... This part here, the double integral... If we look at and and we make uh, we make this ds into our uh, into our picture, the the a or the area here. This is just having radius is one, right? So we are having just pi, right? Just pi. And then from the this picture, we could take the this double integral. We could make square root of two, and we could take this into r, okay? And then we could take this square root of 2 dA. And since the, the area is just pi, so we could just multiply and then this is 2 pi. Okay? So this is, we can write this is area pi r squared or a is equal to pi. Okay, and then okay, what's next is okay, what the other thing? Okay. Okay, let me check the other part.
Okay, another notes. Okay, another notes. Okay, let me give you another notes about the vector field and the uh, and the conservative field. So if okay, if the vector field is gradient of a scalar function then the circulation the circulations of the line in the grow after PR is zero okay. and then we can also show that the circulation um, circulation is zero for every closed curve or every simple closed curve and then F, we call F vector field, is the gradient of scalar function. Okay, it's, it's conversely uh, defined with the first statement. So if F is gradient of scalar function, then the circulation of FDR is zero. And if the circulation is zero for every simple closed curve, then the vector field is the gradient of the scalar function. So we can say that the F is irrotational. If remember that F, we can we could say that it's it gives um, definition as a, a rotation. Okay. So we can say it's irrotation, irrotational. If and only if. The factor field is equal is equal to del multiply del with a potential function, and then this will be resulting in the statement that f is a conservative. vector field if and only if the curl f is zero so you could also tell whether it is conservative or not from the curl
um, one more section uh, this spoke here oh but I think the last section is, is not, not really important Okay, maybe maybe one note, one note, one note for you. Maybe just telling you from. This two picture only. Okay. So we have the same, the same curve C. Okay, so this is the, they have the same. So conditions is same boundary of the curve C. Okay. So we just want to discuss that the value of the, the value of surface integral. is determined only by its boundary so basically the shape okay the shape like the shape here s2 and s1 here it's not really that important if we know that it has the same boundary of the c which means that if we have two different surface S1 and S2 with the same orientations with the same orientations this N the same N and it goes there and it goes there okay if it's the same orientations with the same boundary of the C okay so same C and orientation and then the line integral f of dr is equal this is s1 curl f dot n ds equal So it's the same. Okay. So so this the two surface is becoming not really important in this case. In this case. Okay, so finish this slope theorem. Okay, um, where after this we could have some exercise. Okay, I will focus my exercise on factor calculus first. If we have time, we can go for other um, chapter as well, like matrix or uh, Laplace. We could start the factor calculus from the The sections, uh, the curl and divergence.
Okay. Let me check my questions. Uh, do I have this? Oh, yes. I'm going to check. Okay, um, let me check which questions. I think for numbers one to six, uh, it should be not too difficult to to draw, right? Um, basically, you just need to plug into some numbers. Maybe you can start with numbers that has unit distance unit one, one unit, one unit, one unit, so you can have uh, better visuals. I think it's it's okay, right? Maybe we could start from this number 7 to 16. Maybe we could start with just a few numbers just to help you uh, familiarize with curl and, and divergence. Okay. So this question is asking curl and divergence so we need to calculate the two maybe we could start number eight right number eight and maybe number nine okay number eight and nine And sometimes maybe you could also check this. Okay, uh, we have we already have R here. We get R. A is constant, and what you need to check is check whether this is uh, the you can prove the identity or not. Okay. So basically, you need to do some cross product, some with del. Okay, del cross R. Okay, uh, we could start with number eight. My suggestion is start with the divergence. So divergence of F. So we have del and then dot. So partial partial x for yz is zero, so it's zero plus partial partial y for x squared z is also zero, right? And the last one is not not and not having any z, so also zero. So this becomes zero. Okay. The curl is del cross f. Partial partial x, partial partial y, partial partial r, c. And then this will be 4xy to x squared c and 6x cubed. Okay. Now we could take. The uh, 
let me let me write this one by one to let you know the steps Okay, this becomes zero, this become a negative for a negative 2x squared, negative 2x squared, i, and then minus, this become, this become zero, right, so we have uh, 18x squared. 18x squared. Oh, uh, I think wrong equations here. Sorry. So number, number. Oh, number should be ten. So it should be ten. Should be ten. So it should be eighteen, eighteen x squared, right? Eighteen x squared. This will be uh, 18x squared and then minus 10yj and then plus this is k this is 4xz minus 10x right minus 10 Oh, it's not X or Z. CPZ. CPZ. This is also C. CPZ. Now it's correct. Yeah, and then this is our curl F. Okay. So basically, just mastering your dot product and your cross product and you should be able to uh, solve this equation i think this is not too difficult right okay what else do we have Okay. Okay, you could try the other number as well by your own. Uh, I will also prepare later uh, another homework, homework four uh, related to factor calculus. Okay. But meanwhile. Um, I think we could just move to another subject. Okay, so this is curl and divergent. The next, the next part will be the uh, independence of path, uh, chapter nine nine.
So let me look for the question first. Do we have that? Okay, we have. Okay, I think we could start from one question from one to ten, one question from eleven to sixteen, and one question from I think nineteen to twenty-three. I think we could start from here. Oh, maybe before this, I forgot. Uh, this is nine nine. This is what? I think this this is green theorem. Green theorem. I think this one is. Oh yeah, this this I think this one first. This one is nine point eight, but we have two two section nine point seven. No, nah, nine point eight. Okay, now I think we can start from here. The line line with the first. Okay, let me check first. I think for number one to four, since you already have, uh, you already given the parametric for example this one this is also parametric here i think it should be easy uh we could you could just uh, um, doing the uh parameterization and then all x and y we could take the differential form and make it into dx and uh, dy and then we have the dt as well so we will have uh, differenti differentials of five cosine theta and and also uh, differential of the five sine theta. Okay. Maybe let me just show you. Uh, just maybe a number which one? I think number number two. Let's let's say number two. Okay. Number two we have g that is x cubed equal to x y y squared uh, plus two x. First is we we could we we need to take the line integral okay, of this g with respect to dx. So let me write here. Let's start with the some something simple first, and then we could grow to more uh, complex. So we will have the line integral, and then this is the functions x cubed plus two x y squared, and then plus two x, and then the x. Since we have the parameterizations, x is 2t, y is t squared, so x is 2t, y is t squared, okay? So we could exchange all the terms, we could change all the terms and make it into t, uh, into t, okay? So basically, we could change the x into t by the 2t, so 2t cubed, it's become uh, and then t is from 0 to 1. So 0, t is 1. So 0 to 1. x cubed becomes 8t cubed plus 2, 2t. And y squared becomes t4. Okay. And then plus 2x becomes 2 or 4t directly. Or maybe just write 2, 2t two to let you know what has happened here. And then dx is going to be, uh, dx is 2dt. So we could take this and multiply with 2. 
okay and I think practically you could just use your calculator to calculate this okay but the idea is just exchange uh, dx to dt okay all the component also change with the its own parametrics okay? and the rest I think should be the same uh, dy also the same with this x except that dy becomes uh, according to this dy, uh, dy becomes 2t dt so you need to multiply with this for dy okay? if you are having the second question for dy the note that, the note that I want to make sure is the if you have the line integral and we have the ds the, the, with the r flag Again, the same same here. We take all the parameterization inside. We could take a t cube plus uh, four t to the power of five plus four t. But t s becomes our our arc length. Okay, our arc length based on the parameterization. Okay, so based on this. So we will have 4 based on this 2 plus 4t squared dt. And then I think you could just calculate this. I think it's easier to be calculated also. L also. Uh, you could have this you can take out first take out 4 and 4 comes out and then the rest you could you could you could calculate okay. and this become okay. Okay, the next thing is maybe checking. I think number five and six also similar with the number one to four. Uh, the difference is you have three variables, so I, I think I just skip this for now. Uh, let's say we are. Okay, for number seven and for number seven to ten, the idea is uh, if you have the line, this line integral here. The idea is we we could change to uh, dx. We could change to dy. Uh, depends on the um, the conditions. For example, we have y equal x plus three. Now x plus 3, I think it's easily to substitute with y. So all this y here, we can substitute with x plus 3, okay? And then we could just, just dif take differentials, dy becomes dx. So we could exchange uh, dy to dx or dx to dy easily. And I think we could make it into all into dx and then we could find for number 7. I think that's it, uh, easily. <coughs> but for number eight, now since we have this x squared, you need to be careful which one uh, 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 is better. Uh, and I think same, we can take into dx, all into dx. So we have dy equal to x dx, right? So we could take this dy and exchange here. So change dy from here. And all the x, uh, all the y, change with x squared plus 1. This is also x squared plus 1. And I think you can multiply, multiply together, 
and you you are having integrations from uh, now how to integrate and how to take the interval is just taking the x okay. so we, we have the curve we have this is the initial remember this is initial point this is the terminal right so according to your integration whether it's dx or dy we can just choose from this terminal point if it is this x like number seven and eight is x right using dx so we could integrate so we could integrate from negative one to two okay i hope you get you can have idea from here okay if you need some calculation i will, I will write down uh, the steps but i think it should be okay, right? Or or do I, do I need to, to write down? Do I need to write down for you the how to, to write the, the parameters? Maybe let me let me write the number eight. Okay, number eight. Number eight. Number eight. Is okay? Or do do I need to write them? Let me just write number eight, number eight, okay, number eight. So the questions number eight uh, will be right here. Number eight is taking the line the girl to x plus y, the x plus x y dy, and the curve C is from. to 5 okay and then uh, y is x squared plus 1 so we could first we, what we need to do is imagine if you take the differentials here we have this and then we are going to change all to dx so that's why it's become negative 1 to 2 for only the x 1 negative 1 to 2 and then 2x plus x squared plus 1, the x plus um, x, x squared plus 1. And then this is becomes 2x dx. Alright, and then we could take this, and, and we can plus this first because it's, it's the same dx, right? So we have 2x4 plus 2x cube, right? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Maybe this is not. Uh, let me let me let me multiply first. This is two x dx. I think this will be better. So two x four plus two x squared. Okay. So the integrations will be two x four. Let me arrange from the highest to lowest. Two x squared plus x squared plus three x squared plus one. Ah, uh, plus two x plus one. Sorry. And then the x. And now we can just compute it with your calculators. But remember, in exam, uh, we might need to make it partials. I mean, not in decimals. So we need to have something over something. So if you compute this, this should be 1 for 1 over 5. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, uh, that the line integral, we need just to take notes from the initial point and the terminal point. So we could just see those two. Okay. So, like the example number 9 and 10, we have several, several, uh, several ways actually. We could take, uh, as long as it's going to be, this is the terminal, uh, this is the initial, this is the terminal, uh, any method I think should be okay any method should be okay 
if we take number nine here, uh, we could use, uh, let's say x as our uh, parameter. So y is equal to, so this is y equal to, And then we could take this, make it dy equal to zero if we if, uh, derive, right? If we take the x, if we take the x here, when x is equal to, we could also check with the dx and make it uh, zero. So we have the first case is the if we take this C1, so this is C1, this is C2, this is C2. Okay, we, we could have this. So if we take this uh, according to our movement, okay. So we could change the, uh, so for number 9, so for number 9, let me, let me write the question. Line the curl to x plus y dx plus x y dy. Okay. So first, we could take the from from the initial point goes to this, right? So we, we say this is C1. C1 is when y is equal to. Okay, so we could take that. And so basically what we are going to do for number 9 is we are going to have C1 the, the, something here and then C2. And that's the idea. Okay, so C1, so C, let me write C1 is when y is equal to, right? So dy is equal to 0. So which means that we could take change here into 2 and then the dy is 0 so the c1 here becomes or maybe let me let me write with c1 first and then later we could see c1 is from where to where okay. let me just write here so 2x plus 2 and then the x and then the other part is 0 okay that's for c1 and then plus c2 is when when x is equal to so C2 is when x equal to 2, so dx is equal to 0. So we are going to have this part is 0. So this will be 2y dy. Okay, this is what we have. And C1 from here, C1 is from this negative 1 to 2. So that's our q. And C2 is from 2 to 5. Right, this is 5, this is 2. So we could change this C1 from negative 1 to 2 and 2 to 5. And I think it's easy to calculate, right? Easy to calculate. Okay, I think you can just use calculator or I think it's easy to calculate. Not really bad numbers, right? The same thing for number 10. Number 10 is the same thing. So C1, C2, and C3. So we have three line integrals. Okay, I think I will skip that and give that to you um, maybe we could check between 11 and 14 or maybe we could just move on and calculate number 15 or 16 okay, let me check 16. Okay, I think I think number sixteen also use the same principle. Uh, you get, you could say that this has parameterizations. Okay, so you could change all the uh, dx and dy becomes dt, and all the things uh, of x and y we could change to t as well, and then we could have integration with respect to t. 
okay, with respect to dt. Okay. And t is from 0 to 2. I think that's not a problem. I think. Um, number 17. Uh, I think we could try number 17. I think it's also similar. We have x equal y squared. So x equal y squared is our substitution. It's our substitution. So we could exchange, uh, I think, the easily to change x with y squared. So change all x into y. And then we could see from the, uh, the initial point and terminal point, we could, we could take the dy okay we could take dy negative one to one and you could have the uh the results okay and then i think number 18 also similar right also similar to you have this as your substitution so you could substitute x with this y cube plus one okay? i think it's easy to be substituted okay i think it's also okay maybe going to maybe number number 25 or 26 but let me check what kind of question is this if you would to try if you want to try maybe try number 27 27 uh but it's it's, it's actually the same thing what we have here uh let me go see it this part here, the two dimensions, is the same part with here, with this. So we could see that this is changing, x is changing. So we could use x as parameter, right? And we, and then the other part will be y equals 0 and z equals 0, which means that if we use dy and dz, it's also 0. So that's this, uh, I think, uh, we could make this line integral simplify right and then this is c1 c2 c2 is when the z is changing and c3 is when uh, y is changing right so you could use the other part with uh, dz and dy so i think i think it's also okay right so we are having the line integral take it into c1 c2 c3 the question is, you just need, you, you just need to define uh, what is changing, right? And then what what numbers that or what terms that you need to substitute, substitute okay? 26 is practically the same. I think this is all the same, yeah, all the same here with the previous one. Maybe, um, okay, maybe the next, the next page okay we have we still have other page the second page for 9.8 i think from here do you have any questions or uh, do you get what the line integral and in, at, at least for this page so do you get the idea or still confusing so basically the idea is to find out our path right if we have the initial point, we have the terminal point. If the question is asking specific path, then we could just uh, walk through that path. Okay? If not, you need to make the path by yourself. You could use, for example, this path here. You could just take line. You could take line equations and, and you could make y equal mx something. Okay, and then you can just figure out and uh, substitute y with that uh, with the x okay but since it give it's already been given the specific path i think you can just follow that path before for some questions if not then you could make your path by your own okay? and make make the path simple okay? or you could make the path from here goes to here goes up and then goes right it's also another path not that, that that's possible okay any 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 questions from 
from this page so whenever you have like the closed curve you could take the closed curve de divide with some several paths it's okay using this uh, the line integrals or you could later you could see that our closed curve can be a green theorem or Stokes theorem depends on uh, how how the problem is if this is just a two dimensions problem you could go to green theorem if it is a three dimension it could go to Stokes theorem okay so yeah I, I, I hope you know how this can be uh, related one another one another it's going to be related okay i think i will go to the next page for this 9.8 okay so let's see from from this um, several questions it's, it's related to uh, find the work done by the force but it's actually just take this la la line integral and then f dot dr and that's that's what it means for, for the if you are asking like uh, it has like work done by the force it, it, that's that's mean that you have work that is equal to line integral f dot dr Maybe start with with the first two questions. Maybe just number number twenty nine. Let's start with twenty nine. Okay. So F is this, okay, and this is the R. R is this. so we could just take the R and then take the dr. Okay, we uh, differentiate one time. So we have dr dt. So this will be negative two e negative two t i plus e power of t j. Okay. And we need to parameterize okay and it, i think i need to go uh, let, me, let me write here 
we parameterize the parameterize parameterize this y is going to be e with power of 3t so y is becomes e with power of 3t and x is becomes the e negative 4t x squared or x is a negative 2t. I think it's the, the best way to look at this is by looking at this dn ln 2. So you could try several uh, several parametric, right? Several parametric and uh, since we have the e with uh, uh, it's related to the ln. I think the best way to parameterize this is by looking at this uh, the exponent. Okay, let me let me check what else should we have before. Uh, okay, have I told you this part? Oh yeah, practically you could just see from this x and y. I think that's, I think easier, easier to see, easier to see. Okay. So let me just write, let me let me write clearly here. So parameterize that x. Uh, maybe to help me. Okay. Parameterize according to vector position. That x is that x is e. So our f has become okay, and then the question is asking. Take the line integral f of dr, and dr is so e with three t minus e of i and j. Sorry. And then dot the dr is negative two. Okay. So after we dot this, we take the integrations. Oh, this is negative, sorry, negative. Negative 2t, e to t becomes e with power of t. So this will be um, e with power of t. So negative 2 e power of t minus e with power of negative 2t. And then take the integral. I think you can take the integral. Uh, this one. Take the integral uh, using this calculator and evaluate from 0 to ln2. Uh, what else? Okay. 
maybe a questions related to this uh, from 31 to 35 okay, we will take this okay. the other part is not our focus uh, just verify the value so we will have I think 31 to 35 so let's let's look on the number uh, I think I think you see if you want to find the work done by the force the force the factor field this is the factor field so the idea is the same when we have the factor field, usually it has y and x, or x, y uh, variable. And then the other part for this type of questions, they will have uh, either a vector position, like a vector function, another vector function, or uh, it gives you some, some curve okay, that is acting for this factor field. So this 31, number 31, it gives you the y equal ln x which means that you could you could take this y equal ln x as your uh, substitution okay you could, you could you could use a substitution and take it into our uh, our let's say our rx okay so instead of t we now have x okay so you could change all the uh, the positions we have from the point is from 1 0 to e to e and 1 right so x equal 1 to x equal e so that means that means according to what we have here that y equal ln x our r possibly we will have x i plus ln x j okay and then we could check the whether our uh, proposal or our uh, functions is correct or no by looking at this point the terminal uh, the initial point and the terminal point if that's true then we could say that okay we could go with this um, with this oh, vectors okay so we could check with if we take uh, x equal 1 okay we could we could see how it goes and if we take um, x is equal e what is happening okay so when, when we take x equal e it becomes e when we take x equal one it's become one so it is it, it's supposed to be the same as what we have in the point so it's one zero so x is equal one right so when we put one it's still one and when we put e it's it's become e Okay, so it, I think it's, it's correct so you can check that as well and then to calculate we could calculate the factor field and exchange y with ln x and then the last part is evaluating the f dot dr okay and then since we are having the x as our parameter then the the line integral will be evaluated from 1 to e. And then from the f and dr, we could take the dot product. Okay. Number 32 is basically the same as the previous number but the difference is we have two line segments so we have c1 and c2 so this is c1 this is c2 okay c1 and c2 so you need to to, uh, to define this curve first after defining this curve we could let maybe take some parameter okay we can define the parameters with t okay 
you can define parameter with p and um, depends on what we get we could also propose the t is going from like for example 0 to 1 or any numbers that you can find and i think usually the t is from 0 to 1 for the line integrals okay for uh, parametric situation you parameterize by yourself um, and then for example you take this negative 2 to zeros what's happened here is uh, when you have negative 2 and it becomes 0 then probably it has plus 2 parameters right so we have uh, negative 2 plus 2 t right for x for the c for the c1 and for y 2 becomes 0 so maybe 2 minus 2 t uh, not 20 so this is one uh, examples on how you 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 uh, you creating the parameterization okay and then we can have from x from the c1 uh, we could rearrange our r1 from this x and y the same thing with the with this second curve you could try as well and then you will have uh, two different two different um, factor field two different factor field so the factor field here will will go acting for the first curve and then later for the second curve okay. so the idea is exchange x y and y squared with the parameter you get okay. exchange that evaluating with the uh, dr rater we take the dot and then uh, integrate with respect to dt i think it's it, it's it's clear right number 32 number 33 number 33 also the same number 33 also the same you have vertices so it's a, it's like a triangle so it means that you have three curves okay, you have three curves c1 c2 and c3 and you can define each one with each uh, own parameter and you have later uh, since we have three curve we can define the f into three factor fields so f1 f2 f3 and then later we could take the work and then plus all the, the f dot dr from um, each curve okay, each curve and for 34 is the same as the previous one uh, number 30 or number 29 uh, which means that this is going to be x equal t cube y equal t squared and t equal t from our r it's already given so you could use this parametric change to y z x z and x y and then evaluate from one to three number 35 the circle remember circle you can parameterize this easily since it's since it's 9 so x will be 3 cos t and y will be 3 sin t right okay okay the other part is not not necessarily important okay i think that's it for 9.8 9.8 so basically the idea for line integral is uh, basically using parameterization okay. we could use param usually the easy way is we, we can find how to parameterize to dummy variable aside from x y z like for example t uh, i think that's the default way that we have okay or if the question given some relation between y and x for example it becomes uh, like a, we have a, like some kind of line equation for example that way then we could also um, use that as well okay you can you can parameterize using y or x it depends on the function or equation okay that's the line integral okay 
uh, in regards with this um, parameterizations, I think some of the questions can be solved by looking at the 9.9 .9, okay, in the, the, the path, the independence path. Like I told you, uh, we only care about the initial and terminal, but in this question 9.8, it, it doesn't give you uh, those options because 9.9 .9 is haven't started here, right? So in line integral, you could just take the line integral, divide the path, and then plus all the path, and then that's your value of line integral. However, in 9.9, .9, we could see that as long as we know the initial point and the terminal point, like for example, like you can make your own, you can make your own path, okay? Uh, you can make, and then you can choose the easy path to calculate, to compute, and then you can value uh, the line integral easily. That's, that's actually the idea on 9.9, .9, the independence of math, okay? I think I will just give you 9.9. .9. Uh, not here. No, okay. So nine point nine. I think we could start with, um, I think the easy one, number two or three. I think number two first, okay, to, to see um, how we can do this. Okay, first, number two, the question, uh, first the question, find a potential function, phi, uh, and use theorem this theorem, to, and then use any convenient path between the endpoint of that. So we need to create our own path. So now we can create our own path. So first is looking at number two. This is our initial point and this is our terminal point. Oh, before that, we need to find a potential function. How we find potential function? First, we need to make sure that the integrations is independent of the path. Okay. So independent means that, remember the exact equation in differential equation, that's what we are going to do. So we are going to look at this. 2xy as p and x squared as q. And since this is dx and dy, so we need to make sure that uh, the do do y of p is equal to do do x of q. And if it is equal, then it's independent of path. Okay. Sometimes I give you some questions and maybe maybe it's not independent. Okay? So you need to be careful of that. So first Take this, and this will be becomes two x. This q becomes two x, so it's equal. So it's independent, independent of path. And then we need to find the potential functions. Let me see right here, number two. So we have uh, two, two x y. Let me write see like that. D x plus x squared d y. Okay. So basically, the idea is to take the integral. Part we we say like partial integral. It's, it's I think similar with we have what we have in the differential equation. So we have let's take the integrations and and take the 2xy plus x squared and take the integration so we have um, this becomes x squared y Well, let me start with the the potential functions 
with partial x. This is to uh, so xy, right? So the p. Or if you want to start from the left, you could also start from the left, uh, from the right. Sorry. So take the integration with respect to x. We will have the potential, and then we have since we integrate with respect to x, we might have a constant that is a function of y. So we write g of y. Okay. And then we take partials with respect to y and this we can write like that and this will be x squared plus g prime of y and then we see that our potential y is x squared same x squared like with this but there's no other uh, component so we have this g prime y is equal to zero right so because of that then uh, g of y is zero or since g prime of y is zero then g prime of y is zero so our potential function is just x squared y okay and then since this is our potential function then the whole thing here the whole thing here or let me write here that uh, from 1, 1 to 2, 4. We could directly take this into x squared y because it's act actually what we did here, the result of this integration is our potential function. So our poten potential function is this, right? So we could just write our potential function and evaluate it through the points that Defined in 1, 1, and 2, 4. So we could take this. So we uh, plug in 2, 4 first. So 2 squared 4 minus 1. It's 15. Okay. However, you could also, okay, you could also, uh, because it, this question is because it's asking potential function, so you could use potential function. But it's, if it, this is just asking the line integral, what you can do is you could you could try to make out your own um, your own line. Okay, so this is one one two. So you could use this line here. Okay, this is one one. This is two four. So we could use some. This is m is four. Then you could use the gradient equal four. Uh, you could take this four. Yeah, we could use this and exchange to y, all y here. dy is for dx. And then change with all with x. And then the integration will be from 1 to 2 for x. Okay. And then the rest is... We could just take okay, and then that, that's our, uh, our equation. Okay, if this is, this should be correct. Not correct, then I think I made a mistake.
It's 16, maybe I'm a little bit mistake here. Uh, what is wrong here? It should be the same. Maybe wrong here. Or X cube. Or X squared, right? Or maybe let me just take this. So four, right? So two, eight, four, minus one minus one is zero. Hmm, why it's wrong? There's something wrong in my calculations. Don't know why. Well, anyway, uh, I think I make a mistake there. Okay, anyway, anyway. Uh, okay. Okay, um, yeah, you should be able to, to correct this, but does any one of you notice what mistake I make here? Okay, anyway. All the questions I think similar from number one to number 10. Yeah, I think it's similar. And the idea is the same. Uh, so first, to prove that it's uh, it's an independent of path, and then find the potential functions, and then use the uh, potential functions to to solve this integ integral. Let me check the other way. Okay. Hmm. OK, 
Okay, numbers 11 to 16. 11 to 16. Uh, it's the same. We could check first whether it's conservative field or not. Conservative means it's it's basically independent of mass. So we could check using the using this uh, exact equation. So we we need to make we need to know whether this and this if we partial with y and partial with x, it's supposed to be similar or not. Okay. So when we do that, then if that is uh, the same then it's it's a gradient field or we say that it's a conservative okay and then find potential functions uh, the same directions so you could say we could find the potential x and then integrate and then we have the constant having the very the other variable and then we take partial y right or partial uh, other variable it depends on you you want to use potential x or potential y for your uh, solution for example if you start using the potential y here then you could take the the integration and with respect to dy so we have the po potential is because it's it's with respect to y so we'll have x squared y and then plus and then h this is a function of x when you try to differentiate with respect to x, then this will be 2xy plus h prime x. So this now comes the same with this. So, so it, it's up to you which one you prefer, uh, taking potential xy or uh, potential x or potential y. Okay, I think I make a mistake here. This line equations, right? It should be plus one. Right? Because it's actually from this line equation and move upwards one. Right? Okay, I, I make mistake here. So it should be minus three. So four x minus three. So this should be 6. So it should be 6. So this is 3. So we can do this. So first is 8. 2 minus 12 minus 4 minus 3 so this will be what is it 20 I think I think not 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 this one Okay, maybe I wrote this wrong. Well, anyway, anyway. Anyway, should be should be correct. Maybe later I will check. I will check. Let me just erase this first. Let me just erase this first. I think I know what my mistake is, but let me just continue because our time is limited. Okay, so number eleven sixteen, I think it should be fine. Uh, the same is the same as the one to ten. Um, 11, uh, 17, 18, it's the same problem with the previous one, 9.8, work done by the force. So you are going to evaluate the f, f dot dr. 
and how to find the dr you find through here okay. and it's already given this x equal 4 for y and it's also given this okay, okay i think we can start 19 to 23 okay. let's start looking at 19 to 23 Okay, we start with maybe 19, okay, with 19. So, it goes from 111 But maybe before that, before that, we could show the integral is the independent of path. How to show that using the... Uh, because it's three variables, so we are going to to take the the cross product, right? We take the cross product and make it equal to zero. The cross product equal to zero. So first is this is P Q R, right? We need to make sure that P Y equal to Q X and Q Z equal to r y and then r x equal to b z okay so p y meaning partial partial y this is equal to z and q also the same and q with partial z is equal to x r with partial of y is also equal to x and r with partial of x is equal to y. So all this will be the same. So this is also true. So it's independent of path. So we could say it's independent of path. Okay, and then from this 111 to 248, we could parameterize. Parameter parameterize 1 becomes 2 1 becomes 4 and 1 becomes 8 so for x is 1 plus 2t or not 2t 1 plus t sorry because it's 2 right? and then for y it's 1 plus 3t and z is 1 plus 7t and then we could get p from 0 to 1 from this parameterization Okay, so we could take the differentials first to make sure what will happen with the substitutions and uh, dy becomes 3 dt and dz is 7 dt and then we could take this into our substitutions so we could substitute and make it 0, 1 and we could substitute all uh, the equations oh, let me write the equations let me write the equations equations is where? or oh, here yz dx plus xz dy plus xy dz so we could take change all y and z and then it's dx dx is dt well we could separate if you want more clear one by one then this will be, I think, okay. And then dy is 3 dt. And then the other part. Seven dt. And I think from here, um, you could take this Compute using calculators, not a problem, okay, I think. So I think for some equations, it's easy to parameterize and make a line segment, right? But for uh, equations like number 
21, for example, number 21 here. I think it's better just to find the potential function. So I can find the potential function as this, using like this part here. And then you can simply later just take 1, 0, 0, and 2, pi over 2, and 1. And, and then you could uh, evaluate. I think if you make line segments through here, I think it's difficult because it has 2 and pi over 2 here. And I believe not easy to evaluate. I, I, not easy to evaluate by line segment. I mean, so you just skip the using the potential functions. I mean, making through this this uh, method. Okay. okay, that's nine point nine. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, the other part, like besides number twenty one, like number twenty two, twenty three, we could parameterize. I think we could parameterize easily. Like for example, number 23, uh, from 1, 1, so x, 1 to 2, maybe just 1 plus t, y also the same. But z, since z is just ln 3, the same ln 3, we could say that z is a constant ln 3. So we could change all with this equation and we could find the answers with uh, integration with respect to t. Okay, the other questions that might might prompts up is so aside from the curl divergence line integral independent of path, uh, we still have the green theorem, surface integral, and Stoke theorem. Okay, let, let's go to that part. Okay, let's go to the next part. So we might have question for this is the green i think this is the green here i think this is the green here skip number one to four just focus on this page so this is a green theorem the green theorem is 9.12 if you're looking at your textbook it's 9.12 So in 9.12, since uh, the green theorem will include the double integral, so I hope you are familiar with double integral and familiar also with the polar part of the double integral. Okay. So if you look at um, Okay, we could if you could look at number five or six, okay, if you would like to see. Maybe maybe number six, okay, number six, we, we see number six. Okay. So we need to evaluate this line integral, the closed curve line integral, where C is the boundary of the region determined by the graphs y equal x squared and y equal four. Okay, now I think it's easy to be drawn because it's three dimension. So green theorem is, I think, my suggestion for you is to draw the graph if you can draw. So first is number six, okay, number six. Maybe I will write here so that I can write more numbers below. So number six we have, let me write the question. x plus y squared dx right and then plus 2x squared minus y dy okay now first 
According to Green theorem, we need to define this by P, Q, and then we are going to use the partials. Okay? So partials Y with P, so this will be 2Y, and then partial X with the Q, this will be 4X. Okay, the Green theorem stated that this whole closed curve will be going to be changed into double integral with region R. Region R is what we will see from the, uh, the, 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 the questions. This region here, x squared and y equal 4. So region R, and then this would be qx minus py. And then dA. That's the green theorem. Okay, just recall the green theorem. This is the green. Okay, and now uh, maybe to draw first what is the, the visuals of our graph. Let's say this is y equal four, and let's say this is our y equal x squared. So this is our r inside this curve. So we could say that we have y equal 4 and y equal x squared. So we are having 4 minus x squared as the uh, top and bottom. So since we are able to, def the, the, um, to define y in terms of x, I think x can be an outside integral, right? So we could say that this double integral, we could take this into, let's say we are having this We could say that this can be from negative 2, 2, right? For x. And for y is x squared to 4. So negative 2 to 2 and x squared to 4 for dy. So qx is 4x minus 2y. And then this is dy at the end. Okay. So first. Double integral, we start from this inside integration integrations. So we could integrate with respect to y. So we could take this for x to y minus y squared. Okay. And then we plug in x squared and 4. So we will have. So plug in 4 with y is coming 16 uh, 16 x and then minus 16 and then minus x squared so x cube for x cube minus x4 for that so we will have 16x minus 16 minus 4x cubed plus x power of 4. This is dx. And we can integrate a thing easily. You could just use calculator for this integration, simple calculator. But remember, we need to have uh, fractions here. Okay. Why I need uh, fractions in your exam? Because I think it's easy to be uh, verified. If you use decimals, if I I'm not putting uh, the same decimals with you because decimals can be different according to each uh, standards in calculators, right? So I want to make it more uh, simple and then easy to be verified. Okay, I think that's number six. So number six, seven, eight, nine. I think uh, it's all same. Okay, so the, the idea also the same. Whenever you find polar, okay, like for example number seven, you have a circle here. You have a circle, x squared plus y squared equal four, which means that you are going to have double integral in terms of polar. R dr d theta. That's the uh, the way you are writing the double integral in polar. Why we get the R, this is when we substitute or convert the Cartesians to polar, we are having R. Or if you already learned 
the Jacobian, the R is the result of the Jacobian. Okay, when we translate or when we convert x y to R theta. Okay, but I won't describe that in more detail. But for now, we just know that if we have the polar integration for double integral, we have R d R d theta. So we are exchanging dy dx or dx dy becomes r dr d theta. Okay, and next is rectangle. We have rectangle. We have a four points. I think this is easily to to be compute. We can compute uh, the area of the rectangle. Okay, so you could just draw the rectangle, find out the sides, and that's your area. And then I think easy also to follow right so the da is the area okay, so in the double integral of da you could get the, uh, the result also and then number nine the triangle however for the triangle you have to be careful okay uh, if you have the rectangle you could just multiply the sides with the constant but for triangle you will have some some equation here line equation for the side for the for the diagonal okay for the diagonal maybe maybe, maybe we we could we could start to uh, try number 9 kind of try number 9 okay to look at what we have so number 9 number 9 is uh, 2xy dx plus 3xy squared dy. Okay, we could start with p, q, py, qx, find these two. And then the Solutions for the green theorem is 3y squared minus 2x dA. And how to do this, the um, determine the dA, which one, dy or dx? We could take the vertices is 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 4. So this is our triangle. Okay. And we need to find so one, two, 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 four. We need to find that this part here is y equal to x, right? Y equal to x. And then, because it's y equal to x, so we could take this double integral and make the uh, solution. Is, so the x will be outside, and then the inside is dy. So we could take this and make this double integration. Okay, okay that's number nine. I think that's not too difficult. Okay, what else should we have? Maybe the, the region with hole, okay, maybe region with hole. For number twenty-three. Oh it's it's cut. Maybe number twenty-four. Twenty-four. I think the same 
same direction so we start from finding p finding q for this uh, so we have this c1 and we have c2 inside okay i think as long as this is having uh it's it's removing the, the discontinuity here right so i think uh that should be should be should be okay i think So we could say that the PY from here is negative one and QX, nothing X, no X inside, so it's zero. And then the rest is uh, basically taking the Green's theorem so 0 minus minus 1 so plus 1 and then the A so we were just having double integral with respect to the A so how to find the DA to find the DA we need to just calculate the area for this one so calculate the area means uh, we calculate this so a1 minus a2 for this i think we have two on this side and four on this side so this will be eight pi right 8 pi for the area and this will be uh what this is one two three four five two three four five six the sides will be six squared of two so we need to multiply this and then minus the eight pi that's the area Okay, uh, to solve number 25 or 26, we have the C, right? And we have, this is the question. So from this curve, we can substitute. We can substitute this into into here, or or we could take the um, because it's it's an ellipse. We could take the this ellipse as um. Let's say we have a. another c that is a circle x squared plus y squared equal 1 over 4. why we need this because we are going to parameterize x becoming r cos theta r cos t and y r sine and later we could exchange all uh, with the uh, t okay. so why why we need this x squared plus y squared equal 1 over 4. So if you can imagine, this ellipse is also along this circle. Okay? So we could just use this to make our calculations uh, easier. Okay? Like, like number 26, we see that we have x squared plus y squared equals 16. So if we look at how it makes in the equations 
I think it's better if we can make this uh, this x squared plus y squared equals 16 also an ellipse because we have this this sides here okay so if we can make the circle as an ellipse let's say we have this another c c let's say c prime let's say the c prime is x plus one and then squared and then instead of y squared we have four y squared okay and then equal to four let's say this is our uh, our additional ellipse to help us to substitute this while this is ellipse and our uh, equation here is it seems not easy to be substituted so we could use another additional curve to help that is a circle here and then substitute here and then this is also substitute here and we can take this into our uh, parametric okay we could take into parametric So for for this one, how can we make uh, our parametric? We could make this x plus one instead of just x. We could take this x plus one equal to two cos t, and y is sine t, and then I think it's easy to look at, and uh, we could make this substitutions makes the compu computations easier. Okay. I think I will just stop the screen here, okay, uh, just to show you uh, this part is when we have the hole, okay, when we have the hole and then uh, we have the curve and it's simply that the curve as long as we have the uh, the same the same constructions, the same area of evaluations we could make the curve and we could rather we could say that we can imagine there is another additional curve to help us to evaluate the line integral the closed curve line integral now you could take sometimes to read your notes okay for the region with holes i think that is explained i think uh, about this uh, example okay Okay, I think next is surface integral and the Stokes theorem. Okay, the surface integral, let me move to next section. The surface integral, this is, okay, this is, okay. Just to print here. This is the flux. I think this is the, the Stokes. Okay, this is the surface, surface integral. Okay, now focus on. Um, I think we could start with which number? I think the first or the second one. Be okay. Maybe number okay, maybe number just let's start from number fifteen. Okay, start from number fifteen. So we have the G is x and s is the portion of the cylinder the cylinder is 2 minus x squared in the first octant octant means all the positive values and bound by x equals 0 y equals 0 y equals 4 z equals 4 uh, z equals 0 okay. we need to evaluate the surface integral dx so it means that this 
the question is we just take this x ds so the 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 difficult part is to determine what kind of ds we have here okay so first before we start to compute this we can draw what kind of curve we have So first we have z uh, cylinder z z is two minus x squared. So this is c, this is x, this is y. So two minus x squared. So we could draw that first. The quadratic formula for that is on here, right? So the first octant is going to be over here, right? So we are going to have. Um, x equals 0, y equals 0, so this will be our uh, all the uh, sides that is the boundary. And we could take this, maybe up until here, and make the cylinders like that. Okay. Okay. So that, that's our, uh, our shape. And this will be our R. Let's say this is our R. This is S, right? This is S that we want to evaluate. Our S or our Z equal 2 minus X squared. Okay. Now this is 4, right? X uh, Y equal 4 and all this will be 0. Okay, so the next thing is we are going to evaluate this double integral with respect to S. Since we have Z is equal to minus X squared, okay. If we are looking here, our region R is our XY plane, right? It's XY plane. So since Y is a constant from 0 to 4, then x, we need to define x in terms of z. So we have, let's say this is our x from 0 to, this is uh, 2, right? But we have this z here. So we are going to have, the x is going to be from this, going to be from here so we have a, we will have um, and right here we will have x squared is equal to minus z so when z is equal to zero so our x is going to be squared of two Now we can take this and write down that x ds is, let's say we have 0, 4, and 0 squared of 2. And then x and ds is the arc length, so 1 plus 4x squared. So this is from here, dx is negative to an x. And z y is okay zero. So we could take this inside. The formula is one plus the x plus z y squared squared square root. Okay. And then this will be the x dy. And compute Use some substitutions. I think you can you can um, you can calculate and compute at the at the end here. And using calculators, I think you can get your result. That's for number fifteen. Okay, maybe let me just jump to number twenty.
I think number 21. I think number 21. Okay, number 21. You have G, X, Y, Z, X, Y. And then S is portion of 2Z. 4 minus x squared minus y squared and then we have some boundary for x and y and it's going to help us to define and z is we can also say z will be 2 minus half x squared minus half y squared okay. well if we want to draw i think we could draw easily not necessary to draw like the surface but just to see how will it be when we have the region R. So, so since this is going to be uh, Z is equal to function of X and Y, right? So we will see that the Z or the surface is on the top of the X, Y plane. So we could just imagine that there is um, some sort of plane here and with this, this is will resulting going to have a mapping with the with the r and the r itself we can define from here that is zero one and one so we can have a rectangle here that can map the surface maybe my drawing is wrong for the surface maybe it's better to take this and here maybe like that will be better because we can connect this okay so this z is here this is the s okay. and this is the r and then easily we can solve uh that the questions of number 21 is the x y right x y so x y and then the s so we could take this 0, 1, 0, 1 for the x, dy and x, y and then we could take the uh, the arc length so we could say that this is the take the partial the partial x and partial y and then squared we could take this and then dA or dx dy. Or we could say that from here, we could say dx and dy is negative x. Okay. Now I think we can also uh solve this first is integrating with respect to dx i hope you don't have a pr much problem for double integral okay so you need to review double integral in calculus 2 by yourself uh, i don't really want to give much details on double integral but it should be uh, you should be able to familiar with that double integral okay so integration with dx so it means that y squared becomes a constant y also becomes constant so it's, it's, it's simply see this as x and 1 plus x squared and then using substitutions you could take this and then find uh, what this integration is okay. okay that's number 21 I think uh, what else Okay, and in and in, in and in the exam, I don't want to have like computation that's too complicated. So, uh, so I hope you can you, you you can have no problem with the computations. Okay, so you can focus on the solutions and uh, the theorem you will you will gonna use. Okay.
Okay, aside from this, we might also have the flux. Okay, the flux, recall the flux is basically the double integral f dot n ds. And n is basically got from the del of g divided by its magnitude. Okay, uh, the flux is on the next page. The flux is oh no, this yeah, this is the flux. Okay. Okay, let's say we start from here. We see that this S is part of this and inside this cylinder. So which means that we have we have we have a cylinder down here in the XY plane. And then we have the paraboloid that is going to be maybe around here. That's a paraboloid. So we could say from this paraboloid, from this paraboloid, we could make our function c. Okay. <clears throat> that is x squared plus y squared plus z minus five. Let's say this is our g. Um, g. So we could say. We could take the del G and then we could take the the normal use the unit normal so two x i plus two y j plus k and then the holding here is defined by square root of five or rather not five sorry it should be four x squared plus four y squared plus one <coughs> and then the f the f is just c k so f dot n <coughs> is since x and y is no, uh, we, 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 we cannot find in f, so we are having both of them zero. So we have only z over the square, the whole square. That's our f dot n. And then remember that the flux is f dot n and ds so we need to have the ds from the arc length so ds from the arc length which means that we are going to have uh, since z is 5 minus x squared minus y squared so zx is minus 2x zy is minus 2y and then that's it will be uh, our ds so this the This is R, uh, Z, okay, and then DS will be square root of 1 plus, it's the same, right? From here, the same. So we can cancel, and then it's DA. So DA, uh, or we have Z is 5 minus X squared minus Y squared, DA. You could start with dy dx or dx dy, but since it's a circle, I think it's better to go for the polar. So this whole thing becomes a polar. That this circle is x squared plus y squared equal 4, right? So the radius is from 0 to 2 and the angle is from 0 to 2 pi. So 0, 2 pi, 0, 2, and then this will be uh, 
r squared and it's r dr d theta okay and you can i think integrate easily you can integrate first with r and then later just adding the theta or the theta is having no other uh variables right so you can just take this all and then just write two pi in the front okay and then that's that's number 30 the flux okay the other question is also the same so first you need to define your g and then make operation with the lg and then take it for the end the unit normal and then after that use the flux okay use the flux and if there is no assumption given then you need to assume that the surface the assumption default assumption so default assumption is s will be uh, oriented or upward oriented this is the default okay. uh, unless there is some statement that say it's go downward okay we can say that okay the next thing aside from the flux is the stoke theorem okay, the stoke theorem So the Stoke theorem uh, I think for this first part is just a, a verifying the Stoke theorem not really uh, I think important I think the important one is here so number one to four is I think you can skip that I think you can start from number five for the Stokes theorem. The the models for the Stokes theorem is first is evaluate this line integral, close line integral f dot dr. Okay, and then you are given the factor field, the uh, the conditions. Okay, all the curve you are you are being given. Uh, well, you could you could have some some methods. Okay, if it's asking the line integral, first you could just use line integrals and then take different path like the previous line integral, or you could make the line integral and then convert into Stokes theorem. If this is makes e easy to compute, then do that. Okay, right? do do the computation. Okay, for example, for example, number five, okay, you have number five here, you have the triangle here, it, it's going to be, looks like this, right, for, for this number five. So you could, you, you could make the plane, so you could, so the plane equation is z equal 1 minus x minus y right and then from here you could go for um, finding the uh, the arc length okay you, so you can have zx zy and you can find the ds from there okay because basically we are going to change the line integral f dot dr becomes the Stokes, the curl F, and then dot N, and then DS. Okay. So how to find the DS is basically from here, from the from the conditions given. Okay. From the conditions given. So first, uh, define F from here. It's already given. Take the curl, and then evaluate N. Okay, evaluate N. How to evaluate n? It's going to be from the from the plane here that n is going to be here, right? So 
So we could take the n from the c, take the g is x plus y plus c minus 1. Okay, that's our g. So take del g, take n, and then that's your n. And then you can plug in all into this equation. Okay, that's one question. Um, so evaluate in the line integral, and then you can exchange this line integral into the double integral with Stokes there. And then another problem is, oh, wait, 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 not this problem. Okay. So the problem here is, it's directly asking the double integral s curl f and, dot n ds. And uh, we, we are the given vector field, okay, and we have the s. So it's, it's a portion of paraboloid. Uh, we have uh, 0 to 4. If you can draw, then you might draw to see what's the, the condition. Okay. So since we have the, if we look here, uh, the paraboloid is having z equal 1 over 4 x squared plus y squared. Uh, I think we can take some substitutions, okay, some substitutions, uh, and then take into polar. I think we could take into polar. So, this question is actually from the curl, uh, from the uh, Stokes form. Let's say this is curl f dot n and then the s. What we are going to do is taking this into the line integral, okay, f of the r, okay? And I think it will be, it will be much more uh, simpler, okay? If we are given, like for example, the f is this, so which means that that is going to be our f here, and then the question is r, okay, which r we are going to solve, okay? So ddr. So according to this z here, we can use the z as our uh, pinpoint for parameterization. So we could write down, since the z is, this is number 13, okay. since the z is, uh, what is c, 1 over 4x squared plus y squared, let me write with 4z and then x squared and then 4y squared. Okay. So first, we could parameterize x squared and 4y squared, okay? So let x become 4 cosine t, and let y is 2 sine t. So we could take this, right? And then it will be having a, a polar. And, and then let z is just a constant Four, okay, according to uh, the paraboloid, okay, and then let t is from zero to two pi. So we will have zero to two pi, and then we could use this f. Where is f? This f. Okay, let me erase this. So all the all the y, z, x change into the parametric, change into this for cos t and 2 sine t. Okay. And then integrate with respect to dt. Okay. Okay, that will be, I think, the Stokes theorem. So up until there. So the Stokes theorem. It, uh, it can be an evaluation of the line integral C, closed curve, and then you can convert into the curl, this double integral curl dot NDS, or from the curl, you can convert to 
the line integral. Okay, so that's uh, two ways that you can see. And then it de depends on the questions, and you can see which way it's going to be um, easy to follow. Okay. I will give you a hint in every question in the exam, so you don't really um, lost direction on how to how to uh, compute. Okay. The difficult part may be in the process, okay, how you get the integration and how to make the uh, to make up the theorem. Okay, I think that will be the, the, the difficult part. Okay. Maybe up until here is there any question? Any question so far? Uh, actually I'm I'm having one one feedback from you, okay. Uh, let me write. And for the Monday, next Monday, um, I prefer not having a class, but if you need more exercise, I can make additional video for some practice, for some problems in your textbook, okay? it's especially the factor calculus. Okay. Because I believe the matrix, uh, as long as you follow the notes and follow the textbook, not really a problem. Laplace also the same. I believe the quiz also not too complicated, right? The quiz is just it, it, it just asking like the direct question, right? It just just follow the notes, follow the exam. I follow the textbook. Not, not a problem. Okay, if there is not no questions, let me give you some uh, uh, not not really a question, but just like feedback from you. Let me give you the the files. Uh, the link and later I will share the notes with you okay Okay, this is just a small evaluation. Not not having not no no, no question at all. Just uh, like a small survey, because I need some help from you. Okay, because um, when I try to calculate your score, and I need to I need to have your also thought on what we should do in the, at the end of this uh, course. Okay. So I hope everyone can can join this evaluation. Okay, I think we can start. Um, so this is practically what I need to 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 ha to have from you. Okay. So we have studied for this past month, and I think most of you did a good job. But a few students, I think just a few, maybe just two or three students, uh, I think still getting a lo really low score, really low score. If you are me right now, if you become a professor in the class and you see the same situation, would you mind to have them take another uh, engineering of math next semester, which the next semester uh the september the fall semester the engineer of math is i believe easier than our summer course but not easier it will be the sections the topics is is shorter well you have like of course you won't you won't pass my course right give them a project to uh, to help okay but i want to know uh maybe 
you can give the ID of the project uh, in this here, okay? So write your name, uh, not your name, sorry, it's student ID, okay, student ID. Just student ID and give me your final evaluation of my course. And if you have a suggestion, what kind of project you would like to give to your friends, okay? So do you have any idea what kind of project? Okay. And I will, I, what, what I want from this project, since it will be uh, determine whether you are past the course or not, the weight of the project should be also heavy project. Which means if you fail the project also, then uh, which means if the project is maybe it's too Yes, everyone should have the same opportunity. But I think I will just focus on the on some students, okay. And also focus after the final exam. And so after I get all the final exam score, I have some final decisions on the the final grade. And if I can see that there is some problem with that, I can give some project. And maybe the project is for everyone. Okay, everyone can choose whether they want to 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 get into that project or not. Okay, I will I will let you know what my, my decisions, what kind of project, if we want to have this into our um, final final uh, final exam. Okay. So yeah. Um, that is the course for today. So this will be the last course. Uh, if you have any idea or maybe some thought on my course, uh, what should we do? Um, what's the next evaluations? Uh, I think most of you did good job. Um, only a few students that I think really getting maybe too low score so I need to have some some time to think or what should do with, with this situation so probably after the final exam a week after that you will get the notification for the scores okay, after after the final exam and let me know if you want to have an additional additional exercise the additional exercise, hopefully, I can make just into some additional video for you. Okay? So no need to have a class on Monday because I think we we have, I think, um, already finished all the, um, the, basic, uh, the basic exercise. And check the homework 3 for matrix. And tonight, I will upload homework 4 for the vector calculus. Okay? So I hope you can finish all the homework, finish the quiz, okay, and then I can at least um, calculate all your scores and then give my decisions at the end of the final exam if I create all. Okay. So I think that's all for today. Okay, if you have any any question or any maybe any anything in mind, you can let me know. Yes, Sunday night for the quiz. Okay, for the homework it will be Monday and Tuesday. So Monday will be the matrix. Uh, Tuesday will be the vector calculus. Okay, if there is uh, nothing more, I will stop the recording. And again, this this is the last class.